This is an SB101 by Heathkit, and that driver tube socket right there has a serious problem. The plastic broke off between these two holes where the pins go, and it's shorting out. And as a result, I'm going to have to replace that tube socket. And I'll tell you, of all the jobs you can do on one of these rigs, this is probably the most painful. And I'll show you why. To get to that tube socket, you've got to go through this forest of switchboard shields and switchboards. V7 attaches to the board right there, and it basically straddles that switchboard shield. It's got uh, nine pins, and you cannot get to it without removing these switchboards, also known as daughter boards. And we're going to do that today. First, you start out with your replacement tube socket, and this is one that I harvested from an old parts rig. So, where do we begin? Well, I'm going to start out by loosening this set screw so that I can pull the band switch shaft out and then I'll be able to remove these daughter boards. I'm going to be very careful with these boards because I do not want these wafer switches to move at all. I want to be able to get this shaft back in so that they're still aligned the way they are now. Next I'm going to remove this screw and this screw. And by the way, you cannot get this nut back in without removing this earphone jack. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the nut off the earphone jack and push it back so I have easier access. Just want to get it out of the way for the time being. Because when we put this nut back in, we're going to need to be able to get our pinky finger right there. I'm going to get this rail off, but it's got a comb bracket attached to it, and soldered to the comb bracket, in most cases, will be the switchboard shields. They're usually soldered right there. Some people also solder the boards, as you can see here. So, however, you don't have to desolder them all and remove the solder. You can usually, just by moving this, you can break that solder free. Just by gently wiggling it, we break that solder and get that right out. Here we go. This is one of my tricks. You want to get a good solder connection between this switchboard shield and that comb bracket, but there's a little gap there. So to fill that gap, I usually put a piece of solder wick to sort of take up that space and uh, trap the solder so it doesn't just flow freely through it. So each one of these boards has four heavy wires that go down and attach to different parts of the RF board below it. And step one is gonna be desoldering each of these. You have a choice. You can either desolder them from this, the daughter board itself, which is difficult, it's really hard to get those back in. Much easier just to solder, desolder right here and pull those wires out. For this, I'm going to use a dental pick. I'm gonna hook it on somewhere. And yes, it is a little challenging sometimes getting your soldering iron right down in there where it needs to go. You don't wanna heat up other stuff along the way. go. The most challenging one of all, there's usually a wire that runs from this board down to the ground pad of the RF board that also needs to come off. Heat that up. It really is a little like surgery sometimes. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave these two coax lines here because uh, all I want to do is get this out of the way. It's actually almost out of the way. You really could probably do this just by removing the switchboard shield and 
the driver grid board here. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen it up so I can have a little more clearance. Also want to desolder this resistor. In this case, this one's all burned up. So I'm gonna pull that out. And then you may or may not have this grounding wire running from board to switchboard shield. This is the older method on the uh, SB rigs. If you have an HW101, you probably won't have this, but that also needs to be desoldered. Anywhere these shields are soldered to the board beneath it, just desolder them. Get those things off of there. The switchboard shield needs to be desoldered from the comb bracket on this side. And here comes the real challenge. These switchboard shields are themselves soldered to the center pin of these two tube sockets right here and right here. Those have to be desoldered just enough to pull this thing out. These connections to the grounds of the tube sockets are so important. We're going to have to really get those in carefully next time we put this back in. So, we're free. And there's tube socket V7. If we're careful, we won't have to take this board out. I was going to do it, but you know, I'm looking more carefully now, and I see like it, we can get right under this wafer switch, get the sucker out of there without having to touch this. We will move this aside. Now we got access. First of all, a word about desoldering wick. This is the good stuff, NTE. It's a little more expensive. This is the garbage. It's cheap on eBay and it doesn't really work. There are many different ways of desoldering. You can use this desoldering bulb. You can use a special desoldering iron. Uh, I like to use the wick just because it's I've broken so many desoldering irons already that I just find this to be a whole lot easier. And basically, all we're going to do is lay the wick on top of the area that we're going to desolder, set the iron on it, and you'll see the solder just traveling right up the wick. And that's what we want. There we go. I'll show you just for comparison. See that? That's about as good as it's going to get. There's still a tiny bit of solder around there, but we're going to take care of that. And we're going to have to use probably two feet of this stuff, uh, especially right here around the, the center pin, the ground pin of the tube socket. What I'm going to do, grab one end and just start pulling it upward. So it just sucks all that solder off of there. Look at that. It's a very rewarding little undertaking. Our goal is to get as much solder off of there as we can. And then at that point, I want to push each pin through the circuit board one at a time. Because I want to I want to do it while that pin is still nice and hot. You don't want to desolder and then have to come back and reheat each of those pins and do this. Because what we're going to do is just take the tip of the soldering iron, just push it through, just just a little bit, just like that. By the time we're done with it, they'll all be sticking out just a little bit on the other side, and then we can. Uh, Continue to push them through and get that tube socket out of there. Okay, we're all done. Got all the pins poked through mostly. Looks pretty bad. I'm going to flip the rig around. And with any luck, all the pins will be pretty well free and we can just ease that sucker right out of there. See how it's starting to fall apart? That's okay because we're going to toss it. Now I'm just going to go in and 
make sure each of the holes is rounded out to accept the pins of the new socket. And there she goes. Snap it in place. All right, now the fun part. It's a little contact cleaner and a toothbrush. Just in case there's any grit or particles that don't need to be there. Now these traces are old and every now and then when you've been in here removing something, you'll have a trace that breaks a little bit like this one right here. So I'm gonna make sure that I get a good ground connection from this center pin to this outer pin right in here because there was a little bit of breakage right there. Should look like that. Let's pretend that trace is completely broken. How would we fix it? Easy fix for that is just take a piece of that uh, desoldering braid and just lay it right on there. And that'll just kind of create a little bandage. We can just solder right on top of it. Come on, baby, get on there. Something like that. That looks like a good connection. If I wasn't sure, I would just do a continuity check from here to here. All good. At this point, I want to be damn sure that I've got a good solid contact at each pinpoint. And so I'm going to going to uh, do a little continuity check. Put one probe on this side and the other probe on this side. Do that nine times, one for each pin. Whole lot easier to do it now than to have to go back and resolder. Okay, reinstallation of the switchboard shield. I want to focus on getting those solder points right down over the ground, the center ground pins of the tube sockets. So, got one here and one here. Looks really bad, but as long as we've got a good ground contact, this rig's going to be happy. Okay, got that well grounded to both of the tube sockets. Got this ground point here, another one here. I think while I'm in here, I'll just go ahead and replace this charred 100 ohm resistor, which basically acted as a circuit breaker when that tube socket shorted out. We like it when they do that. Protects the rest of the rig. We're going to put the driver plate board back in place and just keep in mind, each of these bare wires has a specific place to go. And before putting this in, I want to make sure that all of those points where these go are open. If this is one of the solder points, just take my soldering iron and make sure I open it wide so that it can accept the wire. And just make damn sure you get the right wire in the right hole. Otherwise, tragedy can ensue. All right, everything's connected, including that resistor, this uh, ground wire running from the boards to the switchboard shields. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just make sure all these wires have plenty of space so that they're not touching each other. I think it all looks pretty good. The shield is back in place, the board is in place, it's all wired in. Now it's just a matter of getting the, uh, the rail in place and that's gotta fit these right into the comb bracket. Getting these two screws back in place on either end, I take the nut and the lock washer, put it on my pinky, and then shove it right up against the hole making sure it's centered, just threads right in place. Easy as can be. These switchboard shields need to be soldered to the comb bracket. To make sure that they don't come loose, I always shove a piece of solder braid in there, make sure it's really nice and tight, and then solder it. Once they 
lose contact, it can really affect RF output. And now the return of the band switch shaft. Moment of truth. And no smoke. And best of all, we have output. And that's it. Success, 73.